welcome to the Business Miracles Podcast. I'm Heather Dominic, founder of businessmiracles.com and author of the book, Different, The Highly Sensitive Leadership Revolution, found at differentthebook.com. Since 2010, I've been training highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders from around the globe to work less while making more impact and income by doing things differently. I'm so glad you joined me. Listen in and get ready. Get ready for a shift in the way you view yourself, your work, your life. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles podcast, episode 186, Power of Aligned HSP Community. In this episode, I discuss how I came to see that as HSPs, we need to approach business and marketing differently than the other 80% and how community is a key component to business success as HSPs. I share how I developed the three pillars of highly sensitive leadership success, community, core practice, and consistency, and the four C's of marketing success, connection, communication, call to action, and consistency. I go in depth on how the four C's not only apply to marketing, but to any relationship and how community is often something we avoid as HSPs, but how when there is community alignment, it is the true secret ingredient to success in business and leadership for us as HSPs. Let's dive in. We are here to focus today on the highly sensitive leadership superpower of aligned community. So first of all, as we dive into this training topic for today, I want to speak about the three pillars to highly sensitive entrepreneur and leader success that I got very, very clear on quite a long time ago. And those three pillars are community, core practice, and consistency. So let me talk a little bit about where these three pillars came from. Well, a long, long time ago, before A Course in Business Miracles existed, and it was actually called Energy Rich Coaching, which is still the umbrella for everything that is A Course in Business Miracles and the highly sensitive leadership training programs. I got very clear for myself, even not knowing that I was highly sensitive, that I needed to approach marketing differently. I needed to approach marketing differently than I was seeing the other 80 percenters, though I didn't know at that time that that's what they were. I saw those other 80 percenters around me doing things in a way that just didn't speak to my heart, didn't speak to my soul. I didn't feel comfortable with the marketing approaches that were being taught. So I created the four C's to marketing success for myself. I taught them for a long time as part of Energy Rich, and then I teach them now as part of the four C's of marketing success for highly sensitive entrepreneurs. And those four C's are connection, communication, call to action, and consistency. Now, with the other 80% approach to marketing, I was seeing and experiencing the majority of the focus being on that call to action. So that could be related to the concept of the hard sell, right? For myself, again, not even knowing that I was highly sensitive at the time, I recognized that what I needed before anything was to be making a connection with those that I was serving, to be able to make a connection and then to be in communication with those people that I was connecting to in whatever way that I was marketing, whether it was an email that I was sending out whether it was a networking event that I was attending, whether it was a speaking engagement where I was either 
presenting or attending, and any other form of marketing, including then eventually social media. Although when I developed those four Cs, social media barely existed, if you can believe it or not. Aging my (laughs) self-employment. So connection, communication, and then the call to action. Because what I also discovered is that if I wasn't inviting others that I was connecting and communicating with to join me in exploring whether the work that I did makes sense for them or not, then I actually wasn't marketing. And then I also began to recognize that it didn't matter how much I was connecting with someone, how clear my communication was, how direct my call to action was, that if I wasn't doing it consistently, then all of the energy and effort that went into those first three C's didn't really matter. So connection, communication, call to action, and consistency then became the impetus impetus for the marketing wheel to constantly be in this state of rolling and moving things forward. What I'll also add at this point, though this wasn't part of the original design and creation of those four C's, is that those four C's are for any type of highly sensitive leadership success, not just marketing, any relationship, any relationship to have it be at its most fruitful and healthy space is to be consistently nourishing connection, communication, and call to action. Even if it's with a friend, the call to action is, hey, would you like to get together and go for a walk? Or with a significant other, hey, can we set aside some time that's just for us? Or, hey, do you think that you could actually do the laundry this week? Connection, communication, call to action, and consistency. From those four C's, as I grew into understanding myself as a highly sensitive, coaching and mentoring other highly sensitives, I began to notice that there were those three pillars that absolutely needed to be the foundational support to be able to then work the four C's of marketing success or any other actions. And so that fifth C to the four C's became core practice. And the sixth C became community. So let's talk about community. I wanna talk about community for a few different reasons. One is because still to this day, I find that this is one of the three pillars that many highly sensitives resist. But it is also the pillar that I have truly found to be that superpower to create ongoing success as highly sensitives and more than just marketing success. Overall leadership success, life success. So why is that? Let's take a moment and talk about why aligned community is a superpower for those of us who are highly sensitive and for those of us who are highly sensitive, who are committed to being empowered as a person who's highly sensitive. So first of all, being in aligned community removes the element of feeling other, which most of us identify with in some shape or form from our earlier years, whether that showed up for you as feeling other within your family of origin, feeling other within your school, feeling other in previous careers or jobs. To some degree, in some shape or form, most of us had some experience of feeling other simply because we are 20% of the entire global population. Somewhere along the line, we had the experience of realizing internally, whether it was conscious or not, wait a minute, how I kind of process and approach the world is different than most of the other people that I see out there. 
So being an aligned community removes the element of feeling other and gives you access to the morphogenetic field. So the morphogenetic field is part of the morphic resonance theory developed by Rupert Sheldrake. So morphic resonance, according to Sheldrake, says that the idea of mysterious telepathy type interconnections between organisms and of collective memories within species. <laughs> Those are his words. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. The idea of mysterious telepathy type interconnections between organisms and of collective memories within species. It's this theory that accounts for, which I'm sure we've all heard stories somewhere along the line of phantom limbs. When someone has lost a limb and it's as if they can still feel that limb there, that leg, that arm, whatever it might be. It also is about how, and again, I'm sure we've all heard this in some shape or form, how dogs know when their owners are coming home even when the owner is over a mile away and how people know when someone is staring at them from across the room. Again, I'm sure we've all had that experience in some shape or form. We've been engrossed in whatever we're doing, studying in the library, picking out something in the grocery store, doing our work back in the days when we worked in offices and we look up because we have the sense that someone is looking at us. Now, the morphogenetic field, though connected to that resonance theory, the morphogenetic field does not apply to just any group. It applies to a group with resonance. One of the famous studies is the study of the hundredth monkey which is part of, or an example of the morphogenetic field. The brief of that study is monkeys on an isolated deserted island have never before learned to wash a specific type of fruit that previously was not found on that island. One monkey finds the fruit, he starts to wash it. Other monkeys around him through observation, they also begin to wash and eat that fruit. But then what's discovered is that monkeys on the other side of the island almost simultaneously discover and learn how to wash and eat that fruit without ever seeing the original monkey who discovered and learned how to wash and eat the fruit. Taking it one step further, that study showed that an island, not even connected to the original island, again, almost simultaneously, monkeys began to wash and eat the fruit that has never been washed or eaten before. Resonance within the community of monkeys. So again, not just any group, but a group with resonance, a group with likeness and alignment. And what this creates is accelerated learning. And through the resonance, through the accelerated learning, there becomes an automatic or naturally increased confidence. By removing the element of other and replacing it with an element of alignment or resonance, it makes possible for each member of the community what alone seems impossible. So for example, I'm gonna bring forward Cindy. Now, not to say in any way that without the community, Cindy wouldn't have found a way to navigate and manage her daughter's wedding in a way that felt good to her. But I am going to put it out there I'm going to say pretty confidently that she might not have been able to sustain it. She might not have been able to get to it as quickly as she did. And it might not have been able to occur at all. But 
But by adding the element of the Lyme community, she brought something forward out into the open that perhaps she would have previously, without an aligned community, kept to herself in isolation. By bringing it forward, speaking it, being witnessed, and then held in accountability on the forum, and using a tool within a community that has a shared transformational language, within months, she has been able to set herself up for more success with what previously was seeming like a very challenging personal situation, especially because the situation was compounded where all of it happened really quickly. That her daughter announced the engagement and was basically like, I'm getting married tomorrow. <laughs> I think it was really like four months, but you know, for us highly sensitives that can feel like tomorrow, right? So that's a beautiful example. So yes, I am really good at what I do. And the tools and the teaching and the trainings I've developed are effective to support you. So I'm good at what I do. What I've developed does the job. It works. But your potential for success with those tools, those teachings, those trainings, multiplies and magnifies when you are in resonance with a coach team trained to serve you and with a community who gets you. I've just seen it happen over and over and over again. So why the resistance? Why the resistance to community? One, for those of us who are highly sensitive, our previous community experience is associated with feeling other. For some reason, whenever I talk about this, what pops up for me as a memory are sleepovers. I wanted to love sleepovers so much as a kid, but instead they typically came with a sense of dread and anxiety, although I didn't have those words to describe them at the time. Why? Because put 10 girls in a basement with sleeping bags in 1979, and most of them want to stay up all night, make prank phone calls, sneak out the window, go see boys, do all kinds of other crazy things like steal apples from the orchard. Yes, I grew up in the country. <laughs> but what did I want to do? I wanted to get in my sleeping bag <laughs> at least by like nine o'clock with a really good book. <laughs> And I wanted to go to bed. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. I was the 20% of the 10 person population at the sleepovers. So there is a resistance to community because of previous experience of feeling other. And so we've created this story that then we perpetuate that the only way that we can really receive support is when we're in a nice little isolated cocoon and we're working just one-on-one -on -one with someone. And not that there isn't value or benefit to that for sure, but I have just seen through practical research over a decade now that the progress is slower when it's only one-on-one. -on -one versus when there is this experience of morphogenetic resonance. So how to really benefit? One, by being a part of the highly sensitive leadership training programs. Two, the next step is to show up. However that is, that that's meant to look for you from all the ways that are available to participate and experience community. Step three, open your heart. Open your heart and let the wave carry you. Let the morphogenetic wave carry you. Step four, pay attention to intuitive flashes, inspired ideas, touches, and awakenings, and dot connections that will occur by being in community. You will receive something by being in the community. You'll get an intuitive flash. You'll receive an inspired idea. There will be an opening and awakening. 
So start paying attention. And then step five, the final step, ask for support. Let your voice be heard. I'm going to give you some jump starters, some jump start phrases to ask for support. Phrase number one, who might have any ideas about fill in the blank? Something that you're wanting to know, something that you're thinking about, something that you need more information on. Draw on the community. It's amazing what the community brings forward in terms of strengths, wisdom, skills. It's incredible. Phrase number two, who else has also experienced fill in the blank? Next phrase, please share your thoughts about fill in the blank. Next phrase, who else has done fill in the blank? Next phrase, I'd like to share a follow-up thought about fill in the blank. Use as you choose. We are a fully aligned community. We are all at different phases of our journey as highly sensitives, as entrepreneurs, as leaders, but we are all highly sensitive. We are all highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders. Just take a breath in and let it out. Thank you for being a part of this Business Miracles podcast episode and for beginning to dip your toe into the journey of highly sensitive leadership training. If you are ready to truly use your sensitivities as strengths in all parts of your work and life, I invite you to connect for a one-on-one chat. You will experience being deeply listened to and together we'll get a sense of whether the highly sensitive leadership training programs are the best next step for you and your highly sensitive journey at this time. Just go to www.claritycall.com to schedule a conversation. We so look forward to connecting with you. Talk to you soon.